best to see my dear Aunt Fanny. Hello everybody, I'm Garrett. You're watching 11 Bang Bang. Today we have the Cimarron model 1878 out here. What this is, it's a pretty good copy of a Colt model 1878 double barrel shotgun. And this would actually be more of a copy of their Wells Fargo gun. The Colt company never really was into shotguns up until 1878. And they started making this and they sold over 30,000 of these things which was really good at the time for a double barrel shotgun that wasn't European made. Now most of them would have been long barreled. This one is the coach barrel version. And I've had this gun a long time. And if you look at it, you will see that inside here, if you look, there's pitting all along the bore on the back. And that's one thing I have to say I'm not too fond of this gun for. I've kept it oiled, kept it up just like all the other guns that I've had that you've seen me shoot. Had this one for about 10 to 15 years and it just it rusts and it rusts a lot and I don't know why that is but uh, you know I keep it up just like any other gun uh, it takes a lot of oil to keep that rust down uh, the inside is in perfectly good order but uh, yeah it's actually a really nice shotgun other than that it has extractors no ejectors but uh, I've had this thing for a very long time we have steel butt plate there double triggers and uh, Everything on this thing is just like the original Colt. Now, you might ask, why do I have this leather rein on here? Well, when I carried this gun, and I've carried it so much, like when I'm on horseback, I'll just drop that loop right there over my saddle horn and let it hang right there by my side. Reenacted a lot with this gun, shot a lot of black powder, and since this gun was made in 1878, or the original, this is the replica, of course, we are going to be shooting black powder 12-gauge birdshot shells today. So without further ado, let's load this thing up and shoot it. First thing you're gonna do, just press that over, open it up. These are 80 grains of homemade black powder with, I believe, an ounce of number six birdshot in them. All you gotta do now is cock your hammers, you're ready to fire. Let's go over here and see if we can knock out some bottles. All right, so like any other double barrel, your triggers are like this. Your right barrel your right up front or your left barrel your left behind so right barrel is going to be the front trigger let's uh, work them two middle bottles out there's one hit now we're going to go back to our back trigger and there's another hit boy there's nothing like the sound of a black powder shotgun shell is there this time instead of just cocking one hammer let's cock them both and work both of these other bottles out of here let's go on over here this is really a short range weapon, but let's go over here and see about 15 yards. We may get a few BBs on that bottle right there on the rack. Yeah, we got a few on there. Let's see if we can knock down that steel. Yeah, hits it pretty good. This gun is cylinder bore choked. And so, yeah, you're getting a lot of spread. You're not getting a lot of range out of this, but you are getting a lot of spread. All right, so rumor has it that the 1878 was the shotgun that Doc Holliday used at the OK Corral. Some people say it was a European made gun, but it was a 10 gauge, I believe. But still, same model shotgun as this. Let's, uh, let's lay both barrels pretty quick in succession on that center deal. And you might notice that today I'm actually wearing glasses that you don't see a lot. I have got me some period correct 19th century glasses because when you're shooting bird shot at steel, you want to watch your eyes. Now Duke Frazier Productions actually has another version of this gun and his seems to have issues ejecting certain shells. This one does have issues ejecting, actually the shells we're shooting, if they're 
factory loaded with uh, smokeless powder. These are the Winchester Super X's. And if these were the regular loads, it would expand and not retract with that aluminum or steel, whatever you want to call it, base. And it would uh, not eject. You have to break this thing over your knee. But when you're shooting black powder, it just doesn't seem to be that much of an issue. This is one 69 caliber round ball with 80 grains of homemade black powder behind it. So pretty, pretty potent round. I'm gonna put one on the, uh, we'll put one on the main plate here, see where they're hitting. I've never shot them out of this gun. Yeah, it hits pretty hard. At the top corner, top right corner of the plate, makes sense shooting a little high, a little right. That was my right barrel. Let's see if we can do the same thing on this Coca-Cola bottle. Nope, we missed. All right, round ball slug at the Coca-Cola bottle. And a miss. Let's try one more, and if I don't hit it, I'm going to move up. There we go. Yeah, we tore that corner out of that bottle there pretty good. Like I said, I wasn't really used to shooting them out of this gun and always shooting a solid projectile out of a double barrel gun. You got to really find your range because they are regulated to hit at a certain distance. But uh, yeah, that seemed to work pretty good. Grab some more. All right, we're going back to birdshot here. This time, let's put both barrels at the same time on that center plate. What do you say? Now that kicks a little bit. Now, if you were a pioneer on the plains in 1878, 1880s, the gun of choice I would pick would be something like this, except for with a longer barrel. And almost all of these were originally made with longer barrels. Longer barrels give you more velocity, give you a tighter pattern, uh, would make the gun far more universally good for things like hunting and good for things like, uh, you know, even self-defense to an extent. The only thing you're really gaining here, yeah, you get a little bit more spread by shortening the barrel. The only thing this is really good for is for transportation, AKA well, a coach gun. It'll fit down in the box at your feet. You know, it'll fit inside the coach good. You can maneuver. And that's about the only reason you want to cut it down is if you're planning on being somewhere where you're A, going to transport it a lot or B, going to be in tight spaces. But without further ado, let's knock some more jugs off. Well, it didn't knock it off, but we hit it. Woo! I think we took that paint can out. All right, so should we shoot it one-handed? John Marston style? Let's see if we can shoot this bad boy one-handed. I'm going to go with one trigger here. I'm going to try for that bottle again because I put a few BBs in it, but not enough to really hurt it. All right, one-handed. And that does kick a little bit. Let me do the back trigger. We got BBs in it all over the place, just not knocking it off at that range. All right, let's step up here, get just a touch closer. There we go. All right, Caleb is going to throw this old empty Coke bottle up in the air because I didn't bring a clay and let's see if we can wing hit it. The wind's gonna take it away pretty quick, but let's at least give it a try. Pretty sure I got it on that first one. These shells are ejecting nice out of this today. The advantage to owning a replica instead of the original in this case is you can also do smokeless ammo. The only trouble is, like I said, when these are loaded with smokeless, they tend to bind the gun, to, gun up when it comes to opening. Let's put a couple of smokeless rounds on these steel plates here. And those smokeless rounds make more of a pop, less than a boom. And just like that, see that extractor has to work those out. The smokeless rounds, they just don't want to come out as good as the black powder rounds. All right. Let's do a few more shots. All right, let's get started with the gun cleaning process, shall we? Ready, 
it's pretty good at about 15 feet. So anyway, guys, that's all we have for the Cimarron Model 1878 double barrel hammered side by side. Really good reproduction of the original Colt. A lot of fun. Like I said, I've carried this thing a lot of years, over 10 at this point, and uh, used it off horseback, used it in reenactment. Does have that pitting rusting issue that I'm going to fight for the rest of my life, I guess. But uh, anyway, as always, trust in God, keep your powder dry. Bye. Get your stick out of the ice.